Would you bow with me as we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come thanking You for this day, this time, this opportunity. For Father, we know that from the very beginning, You ordained this time that we might gather as Your family and meet You. That we, through Jesus' blood, enter in literally to Your presence, into the Holy of Holies. And Father, love on You. Receive from You. Father, whatever everyone's going through, I know every household, every individual, Father, there's, there's problems, there's worries, there's hurts. But God, for just a few moments, I want us to feel and to experience Your arms, Your power, Your love. Father, I pray that I will decrease, that You will increase. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, good morning again. Oh, it's better. I want to begin our uh, this time with the absolute of all absolutes, and that is, I come bringing good news. I come bringing good news. And that good news is that I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. God loves you. You know, sometimes it's good just to come back to the basics. We get so caught up in our world. We get so, so busy that I do. I'll put it in first person. I get so busy with, with, with life that I tend to, to run past and I forget that absolute, that God loved me. And He demonstrated this love in something so tangible, something so concrete as sending Jesus, the only begotten, to this earth to live a sinless and perfect life. Go, going to the cross shed His blood so that I could have forgiveness of sin. I, I get I get to have that. I get to have forgiveness of my sins. Dying upon the cross, being buried, raised again on the third day, conquering death, Jesus literally offers me, He offers you eternal life. That seemed pretty incredible. Forgiveness of sin. Eternal life. It doesn't get any better than that. Now we've been looking at and thinking about the post-resurrection experiences of Jesus. We've been in Luke chapter 24, and Dr. Luke has been taking us down this journey. Uh, the first thing we did was we walked with Cleopas and the other person, if, whether it was his wife Mary or whoever it was. We got to walk with him the other person, and Jesus, the, 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 the risen Jesus Christ. And we got to, to, to just get a glimpse of what they experienced. Because what they experienced was Jesus literally opening the Word of God and explaining to them how everything not only touches, not only points to, but everything is literally about Jesus Christ. So the author of this book opens it up and shows how He is the center of it. And then, as they go back to Jerusalem, and they're with the disciples, Cleopas and the other person, and they're telling them about it, all of a sudden Jesus is right there in the room with them. It's incredible. And guess what? Jesus doesn't say, Boo! <laughs> He says, Shalom. Shalom. Not that, not just a greeting. Not just a, hey, how are you? Hey, it's good to see you. No, it's Shalom. It's peace. It's that peace that God gives. It's the peace that was uh, originated in God. And He intends for us, His children, to possess that peace, that Shalom. Now, let's go back to Luke chapter 24. 
That was verse 36. Now let's go to verse 37. And I want us to see something that's kind of odd, but it's not just odd for their instance. It's something that's kind of common, I think, for all of us. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 37. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. May God bless the reading of His Word. They were startled and, what does it say? They were startled and frightened. Now, Sometimes we have a little bit of problems with connotations. Connotations with what exactly does the word mean? Well, that word, you know, they, they were frightened. You know, we think of, oh, well, oh, that, that, that kind of startled me a little bit. Startled and frightened, you know, actually in the Greek, it's not two words. It's three words that are being translated. And these three words are, are, are very strong words. And, and, the idea of being frightened, it is literally being full of fear. Now, that's a little bit different than being startled, okay? And that's uh, the, the thing that's going on. They weren't just a little startled because they had seen, res you know, people being brought back from the dead. They had seen Lazarus. They had seen Jairus' daughter. But this is something that's completely different. It wasn't that Jesus came back from the dead. He is resurrected. He has overcome. As we're going to see, He is going to bear the marks of what happened on the cross. That's part of His resurrected body. But something, I mean, here, get this. They, Jesus speaks to them peace. What do they have? It's fear. Something is going on here that I don't think Jesus intended. This idea of fear, it's something that we still wrestle with today, is fear. You know, I, I read this, and I'm not sure how accurate it is. I think that the, there's, there's something to it. But the article said that between 60 and 90% of sickness and illnesses in the world today are caused by fear, sorrow, envy, these, these emotions. That it's that I'm not sure. I, I doubt it's ninety percent, but I think that there's something to that. That our emotions are doing something really negative to us, and I don't think that Jesus intended that. You know, the fear. Sometimes when when we think of fear, oh, I don't, I ain't a fear to nothing. Well, I think we all are a fear to something. Kind of like the little boy that during the thunderstorm, the lightning, his mother heard him crying. She went into his room and kind of got him calmed down and, you know, settled down where he could go back to sleep. And he looked at her as she started out of the room. He said, Mommy, aren't you going to stay in here and, and sleep with me? She said, Well, no, honey, I've got to go back and sleep with Daddy. The little boy got real quiet. And all of a sudden, Mommy heard him say, That big chicken. <laughs> I kind of feel like that little boy at times. You know, I I I want God, my my Father, with me. I, I I really do because there are some things that I really do. There's some fear that now there's some some fear that's that's good. There really is. There is some fear that's good. That when we look at the Bible and fear, we start with I call it holy fear. We're going to turn a little bit to a few different passages. I want to start with Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, um, you'll remember Deuteronomy 6 is one of those foundational chapters in the Bible. Uh, it really is. It's a restatement of what has gone on before. Uh, and just before they enter into the promised land, Mo uh, Moses, through Moses, God is conveying some things to his people. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13, he says, Fear the Lord your God. Fear. Fear the Lord your God. Serve Him only and take your oaths in His name. 
idea of fearing God and serving Him only. Well, if we turn to Proverbs, to wisdom literature, the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. Having the, the uh, a fear. Now, you know, why should we fear God? Well, we need to understand who He is. He is God, the one and only God. He is the creator and sustainer of this universe. He is the one who, through Him, you were made. He was involved in you being who you are. But I think that we also need to fear the consequences of sin. For you see, God set forth His standard. He is a holy and righteous God. And for us to be His people, we have to, we can't just go on sinning and, and living like all get out. No, He wants a little better for us. But you know, what is the consequence of sin? Death. Absolutely. That ought to be a deterrent. That ought to be something that, that we are afraid of is eternal death, eternal separation from God. And in fact, not just for us, but when you look around at everybody that you see, everybody that you see is going to spend an eternity either in heaven with God, eternal life, or in hell, separated from God, which is eternal death. Folks, we were created at a certain point, but every person was created eternally to live, to exist eternally. And we had better fear the consequences of sin. Now, I put this, and I, I like this. We ought to fear disappointing God. I want you to think about that for just a moment. I want you, I think we should fear disappointing God. Now, growing up, when I was, was real young, I feared disappointing this man right here, my dad. Because there was no such thing as time out. <laughs> that hadn't been invented yet, okay? It was the good old-fashioned whipping. And I'm thankful for it. I want you to know I am. But when I was really young, I feared getting a whipping. As I began to grow, as I began to mature, as I began to really know this man, guess what? I feared disappointing him because I didn't want him to be disappointed in me. I wanted to make him proud. Why? Because he's my daddy. I didn't want to... You know, Breckenridge, Texas is not a not a real big place. Everybody knows everybody's business. I didn't want to embarrass my dad by the things that I did. I wanted him to be proud of me. Why? Because our relationship was growing. It was maturing. And you know, as our relationship grows and matures with God, that's really how it should be. That we don't want to disappoint our Heavenly Father. Why? Not because we're afraid He's going to punish us, but because we love Him. And He loves us. And that, 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 it, a little bit of fear is a good thing. A little bit of fear is a good thing. You know, Franklin Roosevelt gave a great, great speech, and the one line that's most remembered from it is the only thing to fear is fear itself. Well, I'm not sure that I agree with that 100%. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. He says, do not be afraid. In other words, don't be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. We're back to that. We're back to that. Yeah. Holy 
fear. It's a very good thing. There's some uh, parts of holy fear that I, I call it common sense. God is the author of common sense. You understand that. And we're supposed to pass this common sense on. You know, it's just like with my girls. I, 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 we grew, you know, when they were little, we were out in West Texas. And, you know, you, you had wind and you had rattlesnakes in West Texas. That's just two of the absolutes. Well, both of them. I, I would, uh, when I'd have them with me, we'd find rattlesnakes. I would show them. I would make that snake uh, rattle and sing and where they could hear it. I wanted them to see and know what it was. Why? Because I didn't want them playing with it. A rattlesnake could hurt them. I'd take them. We had uh, uh, electric fence. Well, I'd take them and would take and spark, you know, with the screwdriver, the rubber handle. And, yeah. Why? Because I didn't want them doing things that would hurt them. I wanted them to have to be afraid of rattlesnakes, not mess with them. I wanted them to be afraid of that electric fence, to stay away from it. Listen to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven. Second Timothy one seven. This is one of those I kind of like King James in this. For the Spirit God gave us for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. God did not give us a spirit of what? Fear. But gives us power, love, and self discipline. These are these are strong, strong words here. He doesn't give us fear. Fear is not from God. He gives us this power. But he wants us to use it to common sense. Sometimes one of the biggest problems that I have, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it first person again. One of the biggest problems I have is I think I need to tell God how to run his his creation. I really do. In other words, I don't trust him. I don't trust him for the future. But I want you to understand that God, if nothing else, he is absolutely trustworthy. Everything that I have placed my trust in Him, He, my testimony is God has been 100% faithful in my life. That is my testimony, folks. So, you know, Satan loves putting this unholy fear in us, doesn't he? It, it's one of those black and whites. You know, this, 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 these things where we just live and we're, we're cringing and we're, we're not afraid of the future. We're afraid of, no, no, that's unholy fear. And where does unholy fear come from? Satan. Satan places it in you. He loves to make life miserable. He does. Hey, have you ever been around a, a, one of those worry warts? Somebody that just worries about everything. Hey, you know, those people that, don't ask them, how are you doing? Because you're going to be there for 30 minutes listening to every ache and pain. Those people have got to be miserable. Man, I want you to know, people ask me, how are you? I'm great. I am blessed. And I thank God for it. You know, this fear that Satan puts in us, it, it just flatly immobilizes us. We don't serve God like we need to. And I want you to understand, every single one of you are a walking billboard for God. You're either a good one or a bad one. Satan really would like for you to be a bad one. One that doesn't show what God's power is capable of. But this, this, this gets so good because I want to share with you something that God showed me in Psalm chapter 55. Psalm chapter 55. I want you to turn there. That whole Psalm is just incredible. But Psalm chapter 55 in verse 22. This is one of those verses you've heard it. You may not know what the address is, but you've heard this verse. Psalm chapter 55 and verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. You think that's important, folks? 
Cast your cares upon the Lord. Rick, I'm glad you're right here, brother. Come, 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 come here. Yeah. <laughs> my brother Rick here, he are a fisherman. He are a fisherman. He loves to fish. And what is it that you take that rod and reel and you've got a string on it and you on the end of that string, you've got a hook, you've got bait, you've got a lure. What do you do with that thing? Do you cast it? Well, when you cast it, what are you doing? You're fishing. But what are you doing with that bait? Are you putting, are you get it, keeping it close to you or are you getting it away from you? Absolutely. Folks, this, this is that simple. It is that simple. Cast your burdens. In other words, throw them. Don't just keep these burdens up close to you. Are you going to be a successful fisherman if you keep that bait or that lure or that hook in the boat? No, you're not going to catch any fish. But when you are successful at fishing is when you cast that lure, that bait away from you. Folks, thank you. When you when we cast our burdens away from us and we cast them to God, we just we get to hand them to God. We don't have to carry them around. We don't have to deal with them. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to try to figure out all the answers. Cast your burdens upon God. And this is one of the... There's three things here. You take those burdens, those fears, you cast them. You put them over there. You get them away from you. You put them on God. He can handle it. He's got big shoulders. He can handle anything. But then, if you've got something, if you've moved something out of you, there's a void. There is an emptiness So you better feel that emptiness. If you leave yourself empty, guess what's going to happen? Satan's going to go take that fear and run and bring it back to you and he's going to bring more with it. So you feel that emptiness. You feel that void of what you have cast off. Fill it with the Scripture. I want you to take Psalm 55 and verse 22 and if you've got a a pen, I want you to underline it. I want you to check it. I want you to put a star up by it. If you've got a highlighter, I want you to highlight it. Psalms 55, 22. Know that address. More importantly, know that Scripture because that is a promise from God. But also, when we're dealing with fear, keep an eye on eternity. Keep an eye on eternity. It's like I said from the beginning. Every one of us are created eternal. And folks, because of Jesus Christ, what He did on the cross and His love for me, and I took it, I accepted it, that free gift, that grace of salvation, I get to spend eternity in heaven with my Jesus. And folks, I can handle anything knowing that, that I'm going to be with my Father for all eternity. Fear, fear God. Have a fear of the understanding of what's going to take place with sin. But my goodness, don't carry around these fears and cares of the world. Cast them upon God. Would you bow with me? Father, we thank You for the the privilege of being Your children, but God, the blessings that come with it of not having to carry around fear, of being able to give it to You and know that You can handle it. God, I speak a blessing, that blessing of peace, that shalom again over each and every person, their mind, their heart, their life, their home. In Jesus' name, Amen. Cowboy Church family, God bless you.